Hi, we are Carolina and Martin. We gave up our home in London and live in a different country every month. We started in Rome and then on to Dubai. From Dubai, we traveled through Egypt. But it's now 2021 and things are different. With the borders closing around the world, we are now in... Sarajevo? When we left London, neither of us would expect to be in Bosnia. But the borders are open, there is no quarantine, and after a few days here, we love this place. Architecture here ranges from the dark wooden buildings of the Ottoman Empire, the grand and symmetrical Austro-Hungarian, as well as a combination of the two. If that wasn't enough, then you have the communist-inspired concrete block style from the socialist Yugoslavia era, right up to modern buildings. When you walk the streets, you hear church bells and the call to prayer. It's our first weekend here and because of rising Covid cases, the authorities have decided to close all shops, cafes and restaurants down. So whilst we wander the empty streets, here's a little recap of the three main events associated with Sarajevo. On the morning of the 28th of June 1914, Franz Ferdinand, the heir to the Austria-Hungarian throne and his wife visited Sarajevo to open the new state museum. Along the motorcade route, six assassins wanting to end the Austro-Hungarian rule waited with bombs and pistols. The first two assassins failed to act, but the third one, armed with a bomb, threw it at the motorcade as it passed his bridge. But it bounced back off the car's folding convertible cover into the path of the next car, injuring around 20 people. The motorcade continued to the town hall. Once there, Franz Ferdinand and his wife decided to cancel their plans and visit the wounded in hospital. On the way back through the city, the drivers took a wrong turn, taking a right at the Latin Bridge. The drivers stopped and Gavrilo Princep, a Bosnian Serb, shot Ferdinand and Sophie at point blank range. Austria-Hungary then declared war on Serbia, triggering actions leading to World War I. Next are the 1984 Winter Olympics in Sarajevo. For this you have to come up to the top of the mountain. So we took the cable car, we're around about 1,600 meters above sea level. And up here we have the old bobsleigh track and a nice little trail for us to go walk around and look down onto the city. The bobsleigh track is still pretty much intact and you can just freely walk around. Now unfortunately it also has a sinister past during the siege of Sarajevo, the track was used as a defensive position by the Serb Bosnian forces. Snipers would drill holes through the side of the track and fire down into the city. Uh, now this track is completely covered in graffiti. The siege of Sarajevo started in 1992, so for that, let's head back down. First, a little background. Sarajevo included Bosnians, Serbs and Croats. When Bosnia voted for independence in 1992, the Bosnian Serbs weren't happy. With the help of Serbian military, they surrounded the city and the siege began. Being here, it makes you realize how war affected so many people's lives. Because most of the kids in early 90s, all they cared was about the toys or their friends. But kids here were running from bullets. One of the lifelines of the siege came in the form of a tunnel. And for that, we need to head to the airport. We came towards the airport to this house which during the siege um, had a tunnel built underneath linking Sarajevo to the outside world. It's one of the first things you notice when you're here are uh, the fences around the side with this barbed wire 
um, and that's because the tunnel is actually right next to the airport and the tunnel goes underneath the runway onto the other side. Those people are heroes because this tunnel helped a lot of people to survive or escape the siege. The workers in the tunnel were paid in cigarettes so they would get one packet of cigarette for every eight hour shift that they did and the work on the tunnel went for 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The biggest challenge was how to get to the tunnel because of non-stop shooting and shooting from the sniper. But somehow we made it. Don't ask me how, I have no idea. So this, this is actually the street where we go down. Because we're next to an airport, the tunnel has been filled in with concrete for security reasons. Um, however, you can still go into the first, I think, 20 meters. So we're going to go and do that now. The tunnel was hidden inside the house, and it's one of the reasons why it was never discovered. So this tunnel originally ran from one side of the runway underneath all the way to the other um, and was used by Bosnian forces to get weapons into the area as well as uh, supplies and things like that. I don't know why, maybe because siege happened not that long time ago. Being here makes me very sad because if you think how people needed to survive and how important was this tunnel. <sighs> yeah, it's very sad. Because the house is so far away from the city centre, we have a taxi driver waiting for us and we have to go back. When you walk through the city, there is history all around you, as well as under your feet. Craters were left where the bombs hit. They were painted in red in honour of blood spilled in those places. Now they're known as Sarajevo Roses. So here's the thing. We came to Bosnia purely because it was one of the few places that didn't require quarantine. But actually, since being here, we spent most nights watching documentaries, learning about the Bosnian War and the Siege of Sarajevo. And we have to say, we, we completely love this place. We love the history. Um, we find it fascinating, really sad. And um, yeah, we've definitely learned a lot by being here. So this street was known as Sniper's Alley. And it's crazy to think it was less than 30 years ago that all this was happening. They say that travel is one thing that you buy that makes you richer and I think that's definitely true here. We're both going away from here a lot more knowledgeable um, with a much better understanding of what actually happened. I'm one of those people that hates museums. I find them in a weird way to be too new. So you, you can take a mummy that's 2,000 years old but then as soon as you put it behind the glass casing, I lose interest. But what Sarajevo does is allows you to walk around and experience it you see the history you see the bullet holes in the buildings you see the buildings that are barely standing and for me that's so much more interesting and if we're in a bar i find myself looking at people i look at them and i'm wondering what their story is because most people here are old enough to remember it and they will all have different stories about what happened but the thing is even if history is not your thing even if the siege of sarajevo or the bosnian war doesn't interest you then there's so much more here. The price of a coffee is around about a pound. You can get a meal for two with a glass of wine for about 15 pound. And, and an apartment here is around 150 pound a week. So even if the history is not for you, it's cheap. And actually it's got so much culture here. So the truth is we came here purely by accident. But I'm so glad that we did. It's, it's definitely one of my favourite places that I've ever been to. I totally underestimated Bosnia. And for me, I'm always going to look back on this place and, and be grateful that I was here.